When we had last left the Spacefarer, they finally retrieved the comm spike, the super cool module that the Crimson Fleet needed to find Crix's legacy. Yes, it was encrusted within a prototype UC ship and summarily brought back to Crimson Fleet's uh, star station. It was there that the fleet's leadership devised a new plan in order to navigate the horrifying EM blasts emitted by the planet Brannock 5? 4? One of them. And it was none other than the very energy shielding producing mechanism used by the City of Neon. Yes, the vast immense Neon conduction grid. <laughs> that oversaw that that hung over the entirety of the city it would need to be obtained in some the data the technical specs of it needed to be obtained and reverse engineered by their super engineer jasmine however before that would be underway they had to debrief with sistef and ratted out everybody this is starfield welcome back zoop 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 there we go let us Head on out over here, huh? Let's see, let's sneak on into, or not even sneak. Let's go on into our cockpit. And I guess we'll fly over to Neon, right? Shit, I mean, we can just do this, right? Can I fast travel while I'm docked from here? No, right? Yeah, I have to at least undock. Okay. I was wondering if I could fast travel with like the scanner HUD. Separation complete. Okay. So where is it? Over this way. There we go. Good mission. Take me to mission. Look at this. They've equalized out our our ship systems and whatnot. Okay, we don't have anything. All right, we're done. Have a good Thank you. Yep. Yeah. You t you too, officer. <laughs> All right, let's head on over to Neon. There we go. Great. And uh, let's just pull this thing down, huh? Let's just pull it down, huh? <laughs> let's just start. Let, let's attach a tow line to the ship to the frontier and start ripping. Right, we'll just carry it. <laughs> Who needs the tech specs? We'll just wrap around like a winch and we'll start fucking flying. <laughs> I'm sure, it'll be fine. If this were a fantasy game, however, if this were an Elder Scrolls, make no mistake, what we would have to do is we would have to take a chunk of it. We would actually have to, like, get a little chunk of it from, like, the corner or whatever. And then the, like, a wizard would analyze it <laughs> and then tell us how it's made. Okay, in here. Also, it would be a mushroom. It would be a gigantic mushroom. Hello, Estelle Vincent. I don't remember you, I don't remember you being in here before. You ever, you come here often? You... You come to the Madame Sausages very often? You looking to get zoned? <laughs> Hell yes! <laughs> I'm looking for you! <laughs> I'm not a tourist, so you can drop the act. I'm from the Crimson Fleet. Zoned? What do you mean, zoned? Yeah, you know, dusted, blazed, frosted, hi. If you aren't here to buy some Aurora, then what the heck do you want? I'm looking for you. Yeah? Well, if I had a credit for every time I heard that line, I wouldn't be stuck working in this place. So, I'm guessing you're the rook that Delgado sent. Well, let me save both of us some time. Turn around, fly back to the key, and tell the big boss that I'm in no mood to screw around. We'll make this deal when he starts taking me seriously. What do you mean? Why, why are we not being taken seriously? I'm getting pretty tired of being called a rook. Let's cut the crap and get to work. 
I need specifics. Who said no one's taking you seriously? Come on, give me a break. You're not exactly a top dog over there at the key, now are you? Sending me a rook to handle a job this risky is a goddamn insult. Oh my god. I don't know what's more disrespectful, her, like, cursing in tone, or that she won't even look me in the eye when she insults me. <laughs> I need specifics. No. Let's cut this shit and get to work. Are you serious? You're just gonna completely blow me off like that. Yeah. I spent the last three months setting up this job, burned two contacts and a hell of a lot of credits. The whole time, I'm also keeping Bayu off our backs. That idiot even catches a whiff of money and he latches onto you like a damn leech. He has certainly earned quite a reputation. Neon is proof of it. Why'd you say it like you like him, Andresia? Come on. Cry me a river. Yeah, you fucking baby. God, all, I, I said foot here into Madame Sausages, and all I hear is a fucking giant baby crying nonstop when I should be hearing the sounds of data on that conduction grid being pulled into my computer. If you want to piss off Delgado by complaining, that's on you. We both need to do what we're told. Cry me a fucking river. That's the way it's going to be, huh? Fine. I don't have a ton of time to stand here and screw around, so I'm going to make this as clear as possible. You want the conduction grid tech, then you're going to have to download it from the power core of Jennerdyne's facility in the underbelly. Okay, that sounds easy enough. What kind of facility are we talking about? I guess we can exhaust all these. What kind of facility? I'm talking about Jennerdyne's main power plant for Neon. <laughs> all their cushy offices might be up in the trade tower, but the nuts and bolts of their operation are running beneath the city. Okay, I've stolen tons of corporate data before in such a specific way. Where's the underbelly? <laughs> beneath your feet, genius. It's the lowest level of neon. Jennerdyne and Xenofresh are down there, along with some of the finest cuisine in the city. What exactly is the power core? Some fancy name the brain trusted Jennerdyne calls the room where all the power from the conduction grid is stored. Cute, right? They store hey, it in a room? Look at me. I didn't build the damn thing. All I know is that the tech inside the place is valuable. They don't. <laughs> when they make it. When you say that they store it in a room, I don't know. It, it just sounds weird. It sounds fucking weird to me. Like, I feel like they should. You should say, like, yeah, they store it in a contraption. They store it in, like, a module or. Or some sort of machine, right? Not in a room. That just makes it sound like it's just a room where it's bouncing around in there or whatever, right? I'm gonna go in there and get fucking Dr. Manhattan. That sounds easy enough. Love the confidence. But before you pull the ripcord, I'm afraid I need to add a bit of a wrinkle. I hope I don't have to kill While anybody. You're inside Jennerdyne, I need you to plant a virus into their system. What? It's a simple side job that'll earn you some credits. I think you can handle it. I'm always interested in making extra money. Delgado never mentioned anything about a virus. Nah, no way. I only came here to grab that data. Why should I bother doing this for you? You just called me a fucking idiot. You crybaby piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> the elevator doesn't exactly go to the top floor in that head of yours, does it? What an Everything asshole! The fleet is accomplished through a decent helping of give and take. As in... I'm not going to give you the information to get your precious data unless you take this virus and upload it like I asked. God, you're more insufferable than the last person I worked with. And you know what happened to her? Yeah. <laughs> God, I hope I find some evidence on you and put you in the fucking chokey. Huh. Delgado never mentioned anything about a virus. That's because you're planning it for me as a favor. Jennerdyne has all sorts of tasty, valuable snacks in their databanks, and I want access. Here, take this micro drive and access the computer in Brayson Bayou's office. It'll do the rest on its own. Research methods check. This high-speed wireless data collection siphon should make the job a cinch. <laughs> it's just a flex. <laughs> We're just, it's just a flex. It's not even we get anything extra out of this. We're just flexing. I'll be on my way, then. I assume I'll be facing some serious security. Why do you need access to their data? 
Another Bayou works at Jennerdyne? Why do you need access to their data? Let's just say that information can be just as lucrative as selling Aurora and keep it at that, okay? But don't worry, I promised Delgado that when it came to the conduction grid data, that's his territory. I won't touch it. Why don't you fucking do it? You know, why should I... <laughs> this would be the perfect time for me to finally get to say one of those, right? I feel like often we, we get that line where, where we're like, yeah, why don't you fucking do it instead? How, why don't you do this? You know, I'm going in there for this other shit. Why should I do you a favor? At every fucking chance you get, you're insulting me. Another Bayou works at Jennerdyne? Yep. Nepotism has its advantages. Word on the street is that the Jennerdyne gig is the only one Benjamin could get for his younger brother. He's, well, he's not the brightest. You say that about everyone. All right, well, check this out. Uh, the high-speed wireless data collection siphon should make the job a cinch. <laughs> yeah, little did you know, I'm a fucking nerdlinger too. <laughs> it might be wireless, but you aren't going to be able to use it from here, genius. Genius. Jennerdyne's got their place locked down tight. God, but I hate her. As usual, the weak link comes from the people that work there. I recommend you start with Ayumi Komiko, an upper-level exec at Jennerdyne. Get your hands on her security pass, and you'll have the run of the place. Little did I know that Rokov would be the exception. Right? You know what? I would give a fucking Crix's legacy for the fleet to be filled with Rokovs. Right? People who talk like Ulfric Stormcloak and are very kind. Maybe a little bit stupid, but are very kind. Right? I feel like at every turn we're meeting people that we, we have contacts in the fleet who are just like massive assholes, right? Even the very first person that we met was like a weird freak, fucking Adler Kemp. Good lord. Ryujin Industries check. I have some pull of Ryujin, if it helps. There's gotta be a catch. Easy. I'll just take her out I and mean, grab the pass. I know, I'm gorgeous. But you don't have to stand there and stare. <laughs> Okay, all right, I like that. What will I need the security pass for? You should be asking what won't you need it for. The facility is closed to the general public, and they keep all of their important files encrypted. Not to mention the fact that there's going to be all sorts of nasty security inside you're going to want to bypass. Okay. That said, also, in this universe, what really is beauty? You know? <laughs> Listen, what... Beauty is just 500 credits and a visit to enhance away, right? If you want to be conventionally attractive, it's that simple, right? What what really is beauty? You know, th this is why I keep harping on about with enhance. It would completely reconfigure and restructure the way in which we even conceive socially of of the concept of beauty, right? There there are so many implications to a widespread canonical use of something like Enhance. It's so wild, right? It's incredible that they, they've they decided to actually... Something? I mean, I could go do something else. Or, make, uh... make Enhance, like, something that is referred to somewhat infrequently, but frequently enough in the story and, and like, within the narrative, right, where people talk about using it. Okay. I if anything, they should probably just kept it similar to how it works in other games where it's something like yeah this is mostly just for the player right this is we're doing a fun little you know immersive diegetic way of letting you do this but ultimately nobody else in the game world is using this right okay ryujin industries i have some pull at ryujin if it helps ryujin cloud doesn't mean shit at jennardine so you're gonna have to deal with komiko and potentially her boyfriend benjamin bayu Anyway, you can find Komiko at Euphorica. Talk to the owner of the place, Micah. She'll point you in the right direction. As for dealing with Komiko herself, she's got an office in the Trade Tower if you're looking for something incriminating. The rest is up to you, Rook. When you're done, come meet me at the VIP booth in the Astral Lounge so we can celebrate. Okay. I guess we can exhaust all of this. Can you tell me anything useful about Jennerdyne? Not much to tell, really. Thanks to their nifty little conduction grid, they're able to provide power for the entirety of Neon. 
Damn thing was supposed to be some kind of miracle invention, turning lightning into usable electricity. Neat trick, right? Only catch is that you need a planet like Voli, where lightning strikes often enough to make it feasible. Guess how many of those exist? Ding! If you said zero, you're absolutely correct. So Jennerdine has been in dire financial straits for years. <laughs> really? Okay. I'm amazed they're still around. They can't export the electricity here or anything? They, they don't, like, manufacture batteries or something? I assume the city has been loaning them credits to keep afloat? Good. Let them burn. What's the conduction grid? What's the conduction grid? It's that hideous canopy over the center of the city that keeps the rich folks dry. Some folks around here call it the span. I think it's a massive eyesore. The like span? Some sort of a modern art piece gone haywire. You can't miss it. Just poke your head outside and look up. Have we heard anyone else call it the span? I don't think so, have we? I think you're full of shit. You're just trying to trick me because you think I'm an idiot. And it's working. All right. <laughs> I assume the city has been loaning them credits to keep afloat? Loaning them credits? No, that's not how things work around here. The only reason they haven't folded is because they charge exorbitant fees for power. I'm talking two or three times what it costs in New Atlantis. Okay, now, on to round two of our little game. Guess who has a major stake in Jennerdine and soaks up all that delicious profit? Jennerdine shareholders, the Ryujin Corporation. I don't like guess I don't like guessing games. People have no alternatives for receiving power. Let's say that. Not a single one. In fact, there are no legal alternatives for anything in this godforsaken city. The only thing people can do is deal with the bullshit and try to get on with their miserable lives. But let's get back to round two of our little game. Guess who has a major stake in Jennerdine and soaks up all its delicious profit? <laughs> Why'd you have to start it up again? God, you're so fucking corny. Why'd you have to say it in the exact same way? <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to guess the Ryujin Corporation because I want to hear what she'll say as well about Ryujin. Ooh, not even close. The answer you were looking for isn't another corporation. It's a person. It's Benjamin. It's good old yeah. Benny Bayou. That son of a bitch has a finger in every single pie in the sorry excuse for a city. Jennerdine's no different. All off the books, of course. How the hell do you think Brayson Bayou got the job down there? It wasn't because of his good looks or smarts. I can promise you that. Well, what's Brayson Bayou's story? Nepotism gets him the job at Jennerdine as their chief technician. Yet the guy doesn't know the first thing about electrical engineering. They obviously invented the position just to give the moron a salary. One of the many poorly kept secrets in Neon. Frankly, I think he's such a screw-up. Benjamin Bay, you stuck his ass in that facility under the city to keep him out of the limelight. Anything I need to know about Ayumi Komiko? Businesswoman. Tough as whole plating. She's the COO at Jennerdine, and I can assure you she didn't get there with her winning smile. As for her relationships, well... That's a bit more complicated. Publicly, she's having a bit of a fling with Benjamin Bayou, but rumor has it that she's just using Bayou and having a little bit of fun on the side with Micah, the owner of Euphorica. If I were you, I wouldn't bother trying to appeal to her good nature. She's a manipulative person who uses people to get what she wants. Can you give me the lowdown on Euphorica? Pretty laid back club over in Ebside. Owner's name is Micah. She's young but sharp as a razor, and has gang muscle to back her up. The little Aurora lounge she has tucked away in the building is the real gold mine. Said she modeled it after opium dens on Old Earth. Bayou takes a cut of the profits, of course. But rumor says it's way less than he usually takes. No one knows why. Okay, good talk. Watch your step. Benjamin Bayou has eyes everywhere. All right. Man, it's got to be said, although her character is, like, insufferable at least half of the time, my god, the voice actress, whoever it is, knocked it out of fucking park, right? Honestly, exceptionally good. Okay, let's head on out to, yeah, Euphorica. Good, good, good. Now, also... Something else? 
Uh, sort of building off of our theory, our working theory that at some point in Starfield's development, there was a situation where you picked one of three different starting planets and you sort of had like a bit of a background there, right? Which they had alluded to in pre-release material and like interviews and stuff like that, I believe. Uh, but there wasn't ever anything concrete, you know, game development and stuff. Why would you give out something concrete like that about the early goings on? But um, I wonder, or I, I would imagine in such a world where that exists, where you have to pick like, oh, I'll start out on Aquila, I'll start out on New Atlantis or on Neon. I think sort of the locked down nature of Neon really lends itself to sort of having that sort of, I don't know, we're opening you up to the rest of the universe, to the rest of the, the settled systems feeling and vibe that you don't quite get on New Atlantis or on Aquila. Because if anything, on, on Aquila and New Atlantis, it almost seems like it would be tradition or almost maybe even a birthright if it's through your family or whatever, that you would be like, oh yeah, on Aquila, every kid when they turn 18, there's they get their own little starship. It may not be much, but it's enough to get yourself around the settled systems and have a look at stuff, right? Here, it's sort of like you're really contained within this one city, not even the planet, right? Because there's nothing else on the planet to fucking look at, except water and pissed off fishes. I feel like in, in such a world, I would be inclined to pick Neon as my starting city. Right, knowing all of this about, I, I feel like from the get-go, I probably would have picked one of the other two, not knowing anything about like, I don't know, the the culture of the different cities and stuff. But now knowing about them and how they all function, I do think I would prefer a neon star. Okay, we shall not actually. I've been in there before, Andresia. I'm surprised you haven't been with. Okay, this is our optional one, right? Yeah. Okay, are we going to be able to get in here, though? And get this extra whatever? I'm worried about... Oh. Okay, it's you. Sure. You're the optional whatever. Hello. Yeah, what? Is this important? I'm really busy right now. Let me save you some time. If you're here for a job, we're not hiring. If you're here about the conduction grid tour, we shut it down a year ago. What's the conduction grid? See that big yellow thing that's draped over almost the entire city? That's the grid. Or what the locals call the span. Besides looking like some sort of madman's modern art piece, it's actually the main source of the city's power. I, I, this is the second person who has referred to it as a span, I think, and they've only referred to it in passing by saying that other people call it the span. I don't need a job. A tour would have been nice. Let's say well, that. Well, like I said, it shut down. Had to cut the entire tour staff, too. Look, I'm sorry if I'm blowing up at you, but I've got a ton of problems and no time to deal with them all. I'm afraid that things aren't going terribly well around here. If you don't mind talking about it, I'm willing to listen. I would have expected this company to be making a fortune. Looks like you're doing fine to me. Why are you being so open with this kind of sensitive information? Why? Because I'm sick and tired of putting on a corporate face and pretending that nothing's wrong. It's do or die time around here. We can either spin our wheels forever or worse, go under completely. Okay. I would have expected this company to be making a fortune. I wish that was the case. Fact of the matter is, we're barely treading water. The conduction grid went online almost 75 years ago. And since then, we haven't developed a single groundbreaking innovation. At this point, the money we're taking in as a power utility barely covers the waste that's going on in the research and development division. Why don't they just crank up how much they charge? 
right? Why don't they just do that? That seems like the neon thing to do. Just crank up how much you charge for electricity. What, what are they going to do? Build another conduction grid? Where are they going to get the money from? Just, just keep inflating the price of it. Sounds like you need a new person in charge of R&D. I can't imagine your superiors are happy about this. Breaking even is better than being out of business. The conduction grid is Jennerdine's only product? Are you in charge around here? It's your all's only product? No, of course not. We still produce smaller power systems and backup generators, but nothing even close to the magnitude of the conduction grid. Jennerdine needs to come out with something spectacular to put us back on the map. If not, we'll remain stagnant forever. Or worse. So it's Jennerdine as in... A generator. I thought it was Jennerdine as in... Genetics. Right? As in they were looking into... Like genetic manipulation or something like that. Right? Like... We were, we were splicing genes and shit. Are you in charge around here? Unfortunately, no. I'm in third on the corporate ladder. One step above me is Ayumi Komiko. She's the COO of the company. And then there's Kaito Harada, our Steam CEO who never seems to be around. Honestly, I, I wasn't expecting you to actually say that you were third in line. I thought you would be like, yeah, I'm the person working the front desk. Right? Like, what, what are you doing here? You're working the front desk and you're third in line? Okay. Huh. Hey, breaking even is better than being out of business. Of course it is, but we're teetering on the edge of a precipice. One wrong move and the whole operation topples into the ocean. The problem is that Brayson Bayou, Administrator Bayou's brother, is currently heading up the R&D division. I swear to you, the man doesn't know the first thing about power systems or electromagnetic technology. So you don't have much of a choice. Surely there are other scientists working at Brayson's side. You have to man up and fire the guy. How did Brayson get the job in the first place? Well, we know the answer to that. Why do you care so much about what happens to Jennerdine? How did Brayson get the job in the first place? Isn't it obvious? Administrator Bayou clearly leaned on Ms. Komiko to get his brother hired. It's nepotism in action. Why do you care so much what happens to Jennerdine? Yeah, why do you give a shit? Do you have, like, a shitload of stake in the company or something? I can give you 117 reasons. Our employees... Oh, God, you have a heart. <laughs> oh, no, How it's worse. <laughs> How many might get cut in a it's worse than that you're a good person. Oh, no. Personnel. I can't in good conscience allow that to happen to them. <laughs> oh, my God. Fuck, okay. Surely there are other scientists working at Brayson's side. Of course there are. But so far, Brayson has suppressed most of their work through pure jealousy. Look, I'm running out of options. No one above me seems to care what's going on, but I'm willing to take a chance. Right, you want me I to have assassinate a full report him. I on Brayson that I want to send to Administrator Bayou, but I don't know if he can be trusted. What do you think I should do? Right, you want me to assassinate his career, <laughs> of course, which is what I meant. <laughs> I'm not with the Crimson Fleet, what do you mean? If you're worried about this company, then send that report to Administrator Bayou. Administrator Bayou is a dangerous man. Bury that report. I honestly don't know what you should do. What exactly does the report say? It describes my aggravation with how badly Brayson Bayou is running the Research and Development Division. I'm also including a list of all the failed experiments he's greenlit, and how much they've cost Genodyne as proof of his incompetence. I'm praying someone as financially successful as Administrator Bayou might be able to put aside his ego and look at this from a business perspective. Hmm. If you're worried about the company, then send that report to Administrator Bayou. Especially if it gets you up out of your desk so I can fuck around and stuff. You know what? You're absolutely right. I can't allow Brayson to run this company into the ground. Hey, look. Uh, thanks for helping me out with this. It's been on my mind for a long time. If there's anything else you need, any questions at all, feel free to ask. Ooh, mind if I ask you some questions about a Yumi Komiko? As long as it doesn't get me into serious trouble, ask away. 
<laughs> I promise it won't get you any more trouble than you're about to get into with this report. Persuade. Oh shit, I'm dehydrated and malnourished. Do you suspect she's involved in anything illegal? Do you enjoy working under her? How long has she been your boss? That's all I wanted to ask for now. Do you suspect that she's involved in anything illegal? Whoa. Okay, that's crossing the line. I can't discuss company matters like this. I know there's a way we can get past this. I'm sure we can work something out. Nobody needs to know about this. I just need information. Nothing will ever connect back to you. I mean... Critical it might success! Be okay. okay, listen. You didn't hear this from me, but I know she's up to something with Benjamin Bayou. He was in her office a few weeks ago, and they had some kind of shouting match. It got really heated until Bayou stormed out the door. I don't know what it was about, but I happen to know Miss Komiko keeps audio recordings of all her meetings in her safe. And before you ask, yes, I'll unlock it for you. Whoa, okay. Just don't tell anyone I helped, okay? Before I ask, fuck, okay, <laughs> okay, man. If you're so nervous about being involved, why are you allowing me into her safe? Because I'm sick and tired of the corruption that's running through this city. Hell yeah, People let's fight it with more corruption. Their lives terrified about being backstabbed and spend the rest of it planning on how they're going to screw over someone else. Something rotten is going on in this company. And one day, I hope to find out what it is. Do you enjoy working under her? Uh, she's my boss. She's fine, I guess. Look, like I said, I don't want to get into serious trouble. She might be a bit tough on all of us, but being responsible for Neon's power grid is a very stressful position. Sometimes that stress trickles down. How long has she been your boss? I've only been working here for a few years now, and she's been my boss the entire time. Well, the big boss is our CEO, Mr. Harada. But I've actually never met him. He lives somewhere in New Atlantis, I think. I w Here's the one thing that I want to know. We know that some people get to work these positions and all that, thanks to nepotism, obviously, but that's usually reserved for higher-ranking positions or people who are tied to high-ranking positions. Where are, the, where are these corporations sourcing other people from? Right? They must be, like... Like, all of their employees very likely come off-planet. Right? How many people, how many times do we hear about people leaving like New Atlantis or leaving uh, Aquila or even a, a place like Sidonia to get employment at Neon? Because it feels like everyone knows that Neon is like a fresh Things fucking hell. I'm right there with you. You know? I don't know. I mean, I guess people are, are some folks are into the rat race and they want the, the potential payoff. That, that could be there. Right? Hmm. Okay. Because there's this... What What's interesting and compelling about Neon is that there's this obvious disconnect wherein there are people being born and living and you know, on Neon. There are, like, youth on Neon. Uh, but there seems to be no schooling system aside from any, like, tapes or whatever that you get to play in your little cube. Uh, but... All of all of the youth seemingly are not getting any type of I hope like I office job. You in any way. Right? At best, it sounds like like young people or whatever, or even not young people, just anyone here who is on the planet, like natural born or whatever, are getting work doing, you know, like chopping up fish. Right? Otherwise you're you're joining a gang. Right? All of the corporate folks are coming from off-planet. They're all being outsourced from elsewhere. You know, they're not investing in anyone else who lives on the planet in any way. They're, they're purely getting folks who have already, you know, have run through, like, New Atlantis, or the, the UC, or the Freestar, and their, like, schooling systems or whatever, right? Their infrastructure. I don't know. It, it would be very interesting to have them lampshade Sorry, that in I, some uh, way. I have a lot of work to do. Uh, that's all I wanted to ask for now. Sorry. Sure, sure, no problem. Uh, where did Jennerdine get its start? Jennerdine was founded in 2232 by the original designer of the conduction grid, Felicia Corbin. Working from her facility in Neon, 
It took her almost 25 years to get the conduction grid up and running. That was Janetine's first and last major success. Hey, could you imagine living on this fucking oil rig of a city without the fucking conduction grid? Can you just imagine? Not only do you have to import all of your power, but also you're like walking around like fucking Link in Breath of the Wild worrying about getting struck by electricity nonstop. Right? Like, at, at a moment's notice, how many deaths to lightning strikes existed before this thing went up? Also, of course, everyone's, like, sopping wet, but, you know, that's typical dystopic Sorry, cyberpunk city. I, uh, I have a lot of work to do. Can you tell me how the conduction grid works? The span above the city is outfitted with a specially developed electromagnetic absorption system. When a lightning discharge hits the span, the energy is instantly distributed across the grid to prevent overload. The energy is then transferred through a series of polyphasic capacitors and rectifiers to ensure all of the negative and positive strikes are equalized. At this point, the energy is clean, and it gets stored in massive stored cells in Neon's underbelly, from which it's parceled out and used for power. Okay. Why aren't there conduction grids in every major city? I mean, we know that. It's not worthwhile. That's an excellent question, and the answer for it is surprisingly simple. The conduction grid is only effective in lightning-rich environments. That's why Volai was chosen as its primary development site. Genadine has always hoped to adapt the grid's absorption technology for other applications, but nothing public has ever been announced. Yeah, what's fascinating to me is that they don't, like... Like, they very clearly, he, he said that they have some kind of storage system, you know? They've got, like, batteries or whatever, effectively batteries. They aren't shipping these things off anywhere, right? They are, like, making immense batteries that run on Jennerdyne generators or whatever, right? And getting them out there. Hope to see you again soon. Because they have, you know... Sure, this might be the only planet where, they, where you know, tying once again back into Starfield's ethos, the only planet that people have found has any form of viability for the conduction grid but it is an entire fucking planet right? let's be clear it's the whole planet for the most part sure right i mean maybe like there are parts of the planet that are slightly different right like the polarity of the north or south axes on the planet maybe are a little, little fucked up but they're they're getting all of this energy from just one oil rig worth of uh, I don't even know if you'd say oil rig. One rig worth of conduction grid, you know? I feel like they could so easily expand it. And like I said, I'm shocked that they don't charge even more, right? With Jennerdyne running into issues, why are they not just fucking ramping up the cost of everything? Okay, let's eat a carrot too. I think you may be trying to take a little too much on relax entry literally relax no time to chat well you're an exec if you want to talk you'll have to schedule an appointment that's okay i'm just here to steal your company secrets jesus the jennerdyne logo is also just like a massive eyesore <laughs> with the <laughs> the colors on it holy hell save it for someone who gives a damn okay okay well, you stay out there and keep not giving a damn. Oh god. We are extremely detected. Is there a way in which I can, like, shutter... ...these windows? Let's see, what is this? Switch. Oh, thank fuck. Okay. Meeting with Bayou. Evidence. Nice. Use evidence to extort a Yumi Komiko. Now we've got some other goodies. I'm actually just gonna take all that. Cool. Jesus, Andresia, you're gonna get me caught here. Let's look at the computer real quick. Uh, 
Okay, if we do one of these. And that. Perfect. Cool. Notification security reminder. Your security software is expired. Please contact your provider for the latest update. Automated update failed. It failed. Update available. A new update is available for your current operating system. Okay. Oh, nothing really of value there. Wonder if that's placeholder stuff. Okay. Sorry, I'm busy at the moment. And what's this computer? Can I even interact with this safely? No, there's no way. I'm not stealthy enough. All right, fair enough. I don't have time for this. Talk to my secretary if you need something. Let's get on out of here. Back to the lobby. Great. Okay. And now all of our... Yeah, all of our stuff is to just go over here. We have to find out where Ayumi is from... Micah or Mika. Okay. What? Here. You know what? A sick part of me kind of wants to see the minutia of using Galbank. Right? Because I assumed like all of our credits and stuff, it's all being. We're, we are technically using Galbank. That's how. That's how all of this is being run in the background. But I would love it if we actually did need to, like, bank credits or whatever. You know? And, like, we could get robbed for our money. Or rob other people. And we there could be, like, dirty money and you would have to launder it somehow. Right? And joining the Crimson Fleet lets you more easily launder money or whatever through Mr. Matrix. Haven't seen okay. the leech in a while. You think the city got them all? I don't know. I think there's one in here. Oh. <laughs> hey. Come in and let your cares melt away for a while. Hey, don't you all have the good drinks? May I recommend a Chimera? Don't you have the ones laced with drugs? Or am I thinking of uh, the other place? Fuck, I'm thinking of the other place. Yeah, these suck ass. I'm thinking of that guy I went into business with. I'm looking for a Yumi Komiko. You people should leave her alone. What do you want with her? I'm gonna beat the shit out of her. You know? <laughs> I, I have some documents for her to sign. I'm an old friend of hers. We go way back. None of your business. Why do you care so much about a Yumi? Not that it's any of your business, but we're very close. We're in love. <laughs> okay. We to let anything bad happen to <laughs> we're her. We're in love. No matter how much trouble she's gotten herself into. Shit. Well, gosh. Uh, if you love her so much, I just have some documents for her to sign. Yeah, sure. Tell me another one. Okay, I'm her old friend. Are low -life assholes. She's broke, okay? Now get out of my club before I get really pissed off and have you thrown into the street. I suspect I would enjoy the attempt much more than you would. <laughs> Whoa! Why did Andresia get so mad about that? What, <laughs> what the hell? Okay. Crimson Fleet. I'm no debt collector. I'm from the Crimson fucking Fleet. How much is this going to cost me? Who's going to throw me out? You? <laughs> I really want to say that. Who's going to throw me out? You? When I need the trash taken out, I call the strikers. They take care of the garbage around here. So unless you want to deal with the toughest gang in Ebside, I'd suggest you leave. Now. Oh, the Ebside Strikers, huh? Yeah, I know a thing or two about them. <laughs> they aren't so fucking tough. Crimson Fleet check. I'm no debt collector. I'm from the Crimson Fleet. The... the Crimson Fleet? Oh my, I, I'm sorry. I had no idea. I didn't mean anything by... Nah, I'm just really. fucking with you. I'm a debt collector. Sorry, I just... <laughs> gotcha! Well, I worry about her. Ayumi owes a lot of money around town. I'm trying to help her out. But, you know, 
I have a business to keep afloat. If you want to talk to her, you can find her in the members' lounge. You already have access, <laughs> so you, you should know. know the way. <laughs> but you know, I have a business keep to keep afloat. I don't. I love her, but I don't love her that much. <laughs> Is what you're saying? Yeah, we're in love, but not not enough for me to go out of business. God, you want me to sacrifice Euphorica? Gosh, I just love her with all my heart. It's not anything serious. I just love her. <laughs> okay, sure. May all your journeys be safe. God, you're more of a I fucking weirdo than I am. Zoned in the members' lounge. Yeah, let's fucking get zoned in the members' lounge. Maybe this is where they sell the good stuff. You good? No, it's just Aurora, isn't Anything it? Anything I can get to help you I forget. Relax. If you wish to relax with some Aurora, I have plenty available. Yeah, let's see. Everything we is it just Aurora? Oh, fuck it is. Yeah, I'm thinking of that other dude. He puts it in a fucking can. God, that shit is good as hell. Okay. Can you tell me anything about a Yumi? Miss Komiko is a dangerous person who's involved herself in illicit activities and associates with known criminals. Yeah, look at that beeping on the shelf back there. For her own nefarious purposes. <sighs> Nothing would make me feel more relieved than their relationship coming to an end. Jesus, you're you're also a fucking freak. Well, with any luck, you'll be rid of Komiko very soon. How much do you know about Komiko and Mika's relationship? How do you know Komiko is involved in illicit activities? I that's rich coming from you who was just trying to sell me drugs. How much do you know about like illegally here, right? You're not supposed to sell them outside of Borealis or not Borealis, outside of uh the Astral Lounge. How much do you know about Komiko and Mika's relationship? They met about a year ago, when Miss Komiko visited Euphorica to purchase some Aurora. At first, they seemed very happy together. But recently, Miss Komiko's become more abrasive, and the two have been a bit distant from one another. Mika thinks they're in love, but I'm concerned that she's becoming a pawn in Miss Komiko's criminal activities. I can't bear to see Mika's heart be led astray. I trust one day she'll find a woman who will give her the love and respect that she deserves. <laughs> okay, buddy. Uh, maybe, <laughs> too bad we can't, like... <laughs> we should be able to persuade uh, Mika or Micah to, like, basically shut down the entire bar <laughs> to support her criminal ways, her lovers in criminal ways, right? Be, be like, do you really love her, though? Because it sounds like you fucking don't, right? You're worried about your business when the love of your fucking life is here suffering? Having debt collectors show up, threatening her with violence? It sounds like. <laughs> Alright. How do you know Komiko is involved in illicit activities? It doesn't take a genius to deduce that there's some sort of illegal activity going on involving Miss Komiko and Benjamin Bayou. They've met down here in the members' lounge on more than one occasion, and frankly... They don't even attempt to be discreet about their discussions. I overheard them arguing about electrical components, delivery dates, and huge amounts of credits being split between them. Well, with any luck, you'll be rid of Komiko very soon. Oh my goodness! I trust I haven't convinced you to... To kill her? That's not what I meant at all. What? <laughs> I all thought I that... All I want is for her to be out of <laughs> Micah's life. Presumably by getting as far away from Neon as possible. Gosh, when you say it like that, it sounds like you almost are begging me to kill her. I'm with the Crimson Fleet, by the way. I you kill people. You to sit back, relax, and enjoy your time here. Yeah, I'm gonna sit back and relax okay. this fucking thing uh -huh. into my inventory here. Can't you see I'm busy, Estelle? Oh, hell yeah. What do you want? I've decided to accept your offer. Let's make sure this is absolutely clear. I don't want any screw-ups. I'll provide the shipment IDs. The equipment description and schematics, and in return. In return, I disable the freighter, transfer the goods, and then transport it the rest of the way for final sale. You got it. <laughs> Too bad your friends back at the key don't know you're cutting them out of the deal. I wonder what they'd say if they found out. Probably the same thing your boss in the big shiny tower would say if he knew you were funneling electrical components, right? Well, we don't have to worry about that, because neither of them will ever find out. Right? 
That's right, Tuts. Let's just enjoy the credits Tuts. and keep our big mouths shut. Hmm? After all, it's just good business. Oh my god, I love Estelle Vincent. She's so fucking horrible and corny and shitty. She's fucking amazing. <laughs> She's such a fucking jackass. She's incredible. <laughs> okay. Let's oh, we should look at that other evidence that we picked up, right? I haven't yet viewed that in whatever way. Meeting with Bayou. All right, Ben. What was so important I had to come to the office in the middle of the night? It's the numbers, Ayumi. I don't like what I'm seeing. If you'd stop interfering with my company, the numbers would be better. Your company? That's funny. I thought it belonged to Mr. Harada. Give me a break. We both know you set up that identity so we could both reap the profits off the books. If Jenardine was showing a profit, we wouldn't be having this conversation. How the hell am I supposed to make a profit when all I have is your brother, the idiot, and my chief technician? I'd choose your next words very carefully, Miss Komiko. Raise the utility costs to your clients, cut some staff, I don't care how you do it. I want Jenardine's profits soaring by the end of the month. And if I ever hear you talking about Brayson like that again, <laughs> well, I'm sure you can imagine the consequences. God, I love the existence of of Brayson by you being involved in all this. I, I think it adds so much more interest to Benjamin Bayou as a character who is otherwise like a, you know, he's like your typical run-of-the-mill sort of uh, upper-crust crime boss situation where, where he's like, you know, he's running the city, so to speak, right? He's very uh, tropey in that way. And sure enough, him having a an idiot son who's like causing shenanigans is kind of tropey in and of itself. But maybe I guess what I'm saying is I like that trope a lot, <laughs> right? Maybe... Maybe I like that. Maybe I want that more. All right. Well, I suppose we spent uh, too long listening to evidence and screwing around and uh, enjoying ourselves. Uh, we'll call the video here for now. And when next we return, we will speak with a Yumi over here. Right? <laughs> and <laughs> Check it out. We have optional kill a Yumi Komiko. <laughs> oh, I'm very tempted to do it, but we probably shouldn't. Right, we, we probably, probably should. God, but what would if this guy say, huh? <laughs> if I just pull out the fucking you know. big iron and blow a hole through her fucking noggin. All right, <laughs> it was she was in, wanted in the Trackers Alliance. I, I, I have the license to kill. <laughs> fucking Trackers Alliance. All right, until next time, please take care of each other.